Hello, I'm Steve Raymond from UCLA. I'm a professor of radiology, urology, and surgery. Uh, and I'm here to talk to you about how we're using state-of-the-art imaging, that is ultrasound, CT, and MRI, and PET scans, with precise image-guided therapy for diagnosing and treating cancers of the liver, kidney, and prostate early and with minimal side effects. And before I start, I'd like to acknowledge Dr. Rankin, who started this field 125 years ago, and show you that with state-of-the-art imaging scanners like this and state-of-the-art therapies like this, we're able to help a lot of patients get treated without any side effects. We know that when we look at a cancer map of the world, we're in the red zone. That's four times more likely to have cancer than in countries that are developing. So we are in a cancer zone in the West. Now let's talk about liver cancer. We know that liver cancer has risk factors, including non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, which is called NASH, and that's with the obesity epidemic, hepatitis C, which has been a traditional cause in the West and in Japan, and then hepatitis B, which is the most traditional cause in Asia and Africa. And liver cancer is one of those few cancers is actually increasing in the number of cases and the number of deaths in the United States and elsewhere. And we, can, we, we know that deaths and, uh, and new cases have increased. But the key in liver cancer is good imaging to find the tumors early so we can treat them. So when we do imaging, we pay close attention to detail and technique. For example, in this CT scan, we see the liver, we don't see much else. But if we give dye just 20 seconds earlier, we can see a big tumor, and we miss that tumor here just 20 seconds later. So technique is very important. And here is the same tumor 20 seconds later. It looks less conspicuous. So paying careful attention to quality and detail is very important. And here's an MRI that's also high quality. We can see lots of nodules in the liver, and this is over time as the dye gets into the liver. And only about 20 seconds, we can see a tumor that enhances very avidly and then de-enhances. And so timing is critical when we're scanning. Quality is critical because it helps us pick out the tumors like this from the background of liver nodules in cirrhosis. And it's also true here, another smaller nodule that you can only see at the 20 second mark and then not see it at all. So timing is Timing and quality are very important in imaging, and we pay careful attention to that. We also pay careful attention to how we treat patients, and the clinic is a very important part of that. The centerpiece of the clinic is our MRI scanners across Los Angeles, and our team, a very important group of quality individuals committed to your care. We have an active surveillance program where we try to get these tumors early. We then use MRI imaging to help characterize these tumors. We then diagnose these cancers. We then use our image-guided treatments to help treat them very precisely in an outpatient setting, and then follow them up until they either get a transplant or for at least five years. We follow them up to make, make sure there's nothing else and not, no recurrences. So this is our careful quality program, our commitment to you. We've built rooms with advanced technology. Here's a CT scanner with monitors, with ultrasound, to help us precisely treat these tumors as well as image them. Now, when we detect these tumors, the next step is precise image-guided treatment, and this is what we do. We use the CT, MRI, and ultrasound, and then find a way to put a needle into one of these tumors, and we can use heat, we can use cold, we can use lots of different things, electricity, we can inject different kinds of particles, um, 
to help us destroy the tumor very precisely with a margin around the tumor. And this is done in an outpatient setting without any uh, substantial impact on a patient's quality of life. And that's our commitment to find and develop the best technologies to enable this. Now here's an example of how we use surveillance. So when a patient is at risk for liver cancer, we try to use ultrasound and try to find a tumor early. And this is the best chance of a cure for this patient. So try to find these tumors early because we've shown and others have shown that when we do surveillance, patients live much longer than patients who don't have surveillance. So surveillance is very important in liver cancer to get it early and treat it early. Here's an example of precisely putting a needle using ultrasound to, to that tumor. And when we survey early, we can treat early. Here's an example of putting a needle into the tumor right there and then using, in this case, heat to treat the tumor. And that bright area is the bubbles from the heating of the tumor. And this is done as an outpatient. And most patients don't even really feel it uh, when they wake up. In addition to traditional ultrasound, we can use newer things like ultrasound bubbles to see tumors we could never see before to help us precisely treat them. And here's an example of that. So here's a tumor that you can only see after the bubbles are given. It's this bright area here, and you can see it here as well. Um, and the patient can breathe normally. And then what we do is use our skill with precise imaging to then put a needle. Here's a needle into the tumor. Put a, ne put a needle into the tumor, and as it goes in, we'll see that we can then destroy it very carefully. And as we, after we destroy it or ablate it, we can see that the tumor becomes darker. It becomes darker, and that means we've gotten a good result. The tumor doesn't take up the ultrasound bubble or any kind of dye anymore. So this is how we precisely detect it early and treat it early with minimal side effects and minimal uh, morbidity to the patient. Here's another example. Here's a tumor that we picked up on surveillance, active surveillance. We then use MRI to find the tumor here without dye and here with dye. We then put two needles into the tumor and heat it and here's the, the bubbles from that heating process. And at the end of it, we have a destroyed tumor in an area within it. And this is called ablation. And there's a variety of ways to do it with heat, with cold, with ultrasound, with other forms and other techniques. Let's move into kidney cancer. Now kidney cancer is another one of those cancers that's actually increasing over the last 30 to 40 years. The good thing about this the only good thing about this is that now we're finding these tumors much earlier when they're much smaller because of scans and other things. And even though it's increasing, we now have the opportunity to use our imaging to really understand what's a cancer and what's not a cancer, and then use these techniques with ablation to treat these things without surgery or any other form of therapy. The increase in kidney cancers is true for white men and black men, and it's true across countries from Brazil to Australia. There's been an increasing inc incidence of these cancers. Again, quality of imaging is very important. Here's a tumor in a kidney that you can see at the 20 second mark. If we scan just a few seconds later, it looks totally different. But we've come to realize that when we use this relationship and see all these, all these time points, we can actually diagnose the tumor and distinguish it from non-cancers and other kinds of cancers. And we've shown that in this paper where a clear cell cancer looks totally different than a papillary cancer, and that looks totally different than a non-cancer like an oncocytoma. So we have these imaging signatures that help us tell which tumors are cancers and non-cancers, 
and what kind of cancers they are. And we're trying to educate ourselves and other doctors to help them understand this at UCLA. So with this, over the last 10 or so years, we can say that the most common and most aggressive cancer, the clear cell cancer, has a totally different signature than a non-cancer like an oncocytoma or a less aggressive cancer like a papillary cancer, which doesn't actually take up the dye very much, or a less aggressive cancer like a chromophobe cancer, or another non-cancer like an angiomyolipoma. So we can tell these things where previously we were not able to do this based on work at UCLA and other institutions. Then we can use contrast ultrasound to also tell. And in this example, when we give the bubbles without radiation, without, without any um, CT dye, we see that the clear cell cancers enhance very avidly above that of a background kidney. And in the next example, in this example, we'll see an example of a papillary cancer that enhances much less than the background kidney here. So we can tell what's a cancer, what's not a cancer. We can tell among the different kinds of cancers without a biopsy and without anything else. And this is a very important first step because that determines what we do. We can follow the patients, we can send them to surgery, we can do ablation on them. And this is a very important thing with good quality imaging, experienced radiologists, and a multidisciplinary team. Now here's an example of how we treat these tumors. Here's a tumor in the left kidney. We put needles into it, heat it, and then follow it with MR imaging. And on MRI, we can see it on T2. Here's the original tumor, and the tumor after it's ablated, it's dark. On the T1 weighted images, the tumor is bright after it's treated. Previously, it took up dye, and now it doesn't take up any dye. And that's how a tumor looks before treatment and after treatment. And this is the key thing. Good imaging to find out what it is, and good imaging to help us do the treatment, and good imaging to help us monitor after treatment. And this is very critical in our clinic. Now, in prostate cancer, we have one of the most common cancers and the third leading cause of cancer death in American men. Traditionally, we had the PSA test, which is a good test, but not a great test. The PSA test detects about 80% of cancers, but an elevated PSA above four mostly finds not cancer. So only about a third of men with an elevated PSA have a cancer, and in most cases, that cancer is not significant because as we age, we'll all have some prostate cancer. And 70% uh, of men with a PSA above 4 never develop prostate cancer. So it leads to a lot of anxiety. We have other metrics to tell us where the cancers could be, but still they're not as good as it could be. After an elevated PSA, most men will go on to a transrectal ultrasound guided biopsy. Now this is a different thing than most biopsies because here we're only biopsying parts of the prostate on either side and not a tumor that we find. So it's an imperfect standard. It's good. When it was developed, it was the best, best approach we had. But as you can see, the detection rate for a first time biopsy, depending on who does it, could be as little as 40% or as high as 70%. And if that has to be repeated, then it's only 20% for the second time and 8% for the third time. Only about half of men using this approach will have a true assessment of their cancer risk. So this is a problem. And one of the reasons for this is because using ultrasound, although it's a great technique, we can only see the prostate as sort of a gray blob. We don't see the actual cancers. And so we have to just biopsy the right side and then the left side in these different steps. And that's called a systematic transrectal ultrasound biopsy. So, so it's a very unique approach. We know that the biopsy is better at parts of the prostate called the base as compared to the apex. So it leads a lot to be desired. And this is where MRI with high quality, which we've helped develop at UCLA with a whole team of experts, makes a difference. So a good quality scanner, a three Tesla scanner, using T2 weighted imaging, diffusion weighted imaging, 
dye or perfusion weighted imaging, spectroscopy when necessary, MRI PET scans, which we're fortunate to have at UCLA, and now precise MRI guided biopsy all help improve our diagnostic capability in prostate cancer, helping us only detect the most aggressive cancers. And then finally, we can use MRI and MRI techniques to help treat these cancers locally or in any different form with and without other traditional techniques like surgery and radiation. Here's an example of our modern approach to how to detect a prostate cancer. So here's a 65 year old man with elevated PSA and prior negative biopsy on the transrectal ultrasound. When we do an MRI, we see the cancer is actually up here. When you do a truss biopsy, you biopsy back here. You don't get up to all, you don't get up here. So now with MRI, we can find the cancer here on the T2 weighted images, here on the diffusion weighted images and the ADC map and show that it enhances very avidly. When we do that, we can then score it with a PIRAD score, and this is a PIRAD score of five out of five. High probability of cancer and high probability of having uh, intermediate or high grade cancer. So now we can do all this, which we weren't able to do before. So then after we give a PIRAD score, find a lesion, we can then use one of several techniques, and here's a video of an MRI guided technique where we use this device, we put a a, a, a guide into the rectum. We can then use the MRI in, in the MRI to then put a needle, as you see here, into the prostate, but not biopsy the whole prostate, biopsy the most aggressive tumors that we see. We can also use different devices to do this in the office, in the urologist's office with MRI fusion. We can do it in the MRI or use MRI fusion. Here's what we do now. So here's that tumor, here's the guide, and we can see it in this plane and the other plane, and we can precisely target it with a needle, right through it, and right through it. And now we have seen the cancer, we've graded it, and we've biopsied it very precisely. And so this turned out to be a PIRADS 5, a high probability of cancer and aggressive cancer, and now we can biopsy it and get a Gleason score of 3 plus 4, which is an intermediate risk prostate cancer. So this is the kind of cancer we want to find with MRI, Gleason 3 plus 4 or greater cancers. And again, with careful attention to technique, every step of the way, we can do it now. Then we can use newer technologies to help treat cancers without surgery or radiation in many cases. And here's one example where we can use the MRI magnet, use a special device where um, we put a little catheter through the prostate image with MRI and use no needles, just heating with focused ultrasound to then treat the whole prostate or part of the prostate. And this is an exciting new treatment, totally non-invasive to help treat prostate gland or parts of the prostate gland. And here's an example of, in the real world, how this works. So this is a 64 year old man with a PSA of 10.1, decreased to 0.6. So here was a scan in January, 2018, and the gland was 23 cc's. This is after the Tulsa treatment. This is the device in the center of the prostate and it basically cored out the prostate with just sound energy and heating it in January, 2018. And by April, 2018, the prostate had decreased to 12 cc's and the PSA had gone down to 0.6. And on a subsequent biopsy, was, there was no cancer at one year. So this is an exciting new technology that we can help to treat these cancers non-invasively. So these are some of the people who have benefited from these therapies without any surgery or any radiation um, as part of a multidisciplinary team with state-of-the-art imaging and state-of-the-art image-guided ablation to help detect and treat their cancers and we're seeing them in follow-up. And several of these patients have gone out to liver transplant in the case of 
uh, liver cancers. So with that, I thank you.